Hello and welcome to lecture 20 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture we're going to be looking at 4.1 and 4.2. So in particular we'll be finishing up section 4.1 of the textbook on vector spaces and subspaces. We'll do some more examples and then we'll start on section 4.2 which will be talking about subspaces that you can get from a matrix. So just as a quick review, we introduced vectors and subspaces in our last lecture. Today, more on subspaces. And then we also then want to talk about subspaces from systems of linear equations. And kind of the key point in that last uh, statement, subspaces from systems of linear equations, is we're going to start tying a lot of the ideas that we had from chapters one to three now into our new language of subspaces. So let's make myself disappear here. I hopefully I'll just going to check to see if I disappeared. Yes, I have disappeared. Okay, so we talked about what a subspace is, and I'm just recalling the definition here. Right, a subspace of a vector space is a subset of the vectors. So it's a collection of vectors. So that it also satisfies three rules. The three rules are that the zero vector belongs to H. The second rule is that whenever you take two vectors in H, you can add them using the addition operation in your vector space and get another element back in H. And the third one is saying that if you take a vector in H you and any scalar in the real numbers, and then you scale your vector, you get a new vector back in H. So statements two and three are sometimes saying that the operation of addition and scalar multiplication are closed in H. And so let me give you an example, and we're actually going to start with a non-example, just because sometimes these are a little bit more illuminating. So our non-example is that R2 is not a subspace of R3. And the reason it's, that it's not a subspace is not because it fails these conditions here. It actually fails the initial condition here that you have a subset a subset of your vector space, right? So let me write that out. Note R2 is not even a subset of R3, right? And why is that? Okay, well, that's because elements of R2 have the form AB and elements of R3 have the form of a three tuple, right? It will have three elements in the vector, A, B, C. So we needed to have a subset so when we're looking at subspaces of R3, we're looking at subsets of vectors that contain three elements. So this is not even an example of a subset, so it can't even be a subspace. So let's kind of carry on with this example, okay? Because you may be thinking, well, that's a little strange because it looks like there should be something in R3 that behaves like R2. R2 is just a plane, and R3 is three-dimensional space, which I've kind of drawn here. So shouldn't R2 be a subset of, or a subspace of R3? Well, th the point is that even though R2 is not a subspace of R3, there is a, a subset of R3 that looks like R2. So for example, if we take H to be all the uh, elements in R3, so we're looking at vectors with three elements such that the last coordinate is zero. We're going to, uh, and A and B can be anything, and we'll let that set be H. If we draw that set, it's everything down here, right? So in the red area. So this is my H. And the point is that H looks like R2. Later on, we're going to be a little bit more precise about what looks like uh, means. There's a notion of isomorphism here. But the point is, R3 may not have R2 as a subspace, but it does have something that behaves like R2 inside of R3. And so let me actually 
prove that this is in fact a subspace. Okay, so the claim is that H is a subspace of R3. And this is good practice of checking the three the three conditions. Right? So the first condition is just saying that the zero vector belongs to H. Right? And this is okay since we can take A equals B equals to zero. So unfortunately I lost the definition of H here. So let me move it back up. H is all a collection of all vectors where A and B can be anything. So I can take, of course, A and B to be zero. Okay, so the zero vector of R3 is inside of H. If I take two vectors inside of H, what I want to do is I want to show that if I add them, I get another vector back in H. Well, let's think about what it means to be in H. So U looks like something like A, B, zero, and the vector V looks something like C, D, and zero. So the point is the last coordinate is um, zero. So, and A, B, and C, and D can be any real numbers. Then U plus V is the vector A plus C, B plus D, and zero, and of course that this element is going to be an H because these are real numbers, the first two elements are real numbers, and the last coordinate is zero. The third statement is proved similarly. And let me just do that. So let U be any vector inside of H, and let's take a C in the real numbers then C times U is equal to C A C B zero. And again, that gives me something in H. So I've now checked all the three conditions of being a subset. The zero vector of V is in H, the sum of two vectors is in H, and the, the vector scaled by C is also in H. So this shows me that H, this red plane here, uh, is a subspace in R3. And in fact, we can say something a little bit more general, you can actually check this if you want, is that any plane in R3 through the origin is going to be a subspace. Okay, so I can, I should probably say subspace of R3, and any line in R2 through the origin is a subspace of R2. And it's clear that you need to have the origin on your plane or the line because you need to be able to satisfy the condition that the zero vector is inside of your um, inside of your plane or your origin because you want it to be a subspace. So if you had a plane or a line that did not go through an origin, that would not be considered a subspace. Okay, so we're, we'll just take a little break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about another way to build subspaces inside of a vector space.